So hello everyone, this is Andrew Pontius coming to you from the headquarters of Evo Electric in Long Beach, California. I'm here with uh, James Taylor from Extreme E. James, thanks for coming on screen again with us today. Thank you, Andrew. It's a pleasure to be here today. Great. And so I'm just going to launch right into this. A lot of people are hearing that the Extreme E team have decided to extend their series into, into hydrogen. And this is super exciting. Can you tell us just a little bit about that? Of course, Andrew. As you say, um, we, uh, we are doing that. From 2024, we will launch Extreme H, which we believe will be the first global uh, major hydrogen championship, uh, sitting alongside Extreme E at the same event locations on the same event weekends. We believe we've got a fantastic product and indeed a platform in Extreme E. And now we want to move to the next stage with Extreme H. Absolutely. The, the platform has been fantastic. The locations have been fantastic and the awareness is really, it's really increasing with this show. And I think the H uh, extension of it is absolutely natural and, and fantastic. So I, I'll ask a question for some of the traditional uh, race fans out there. If you've already got the hydrogen on site, you're using the hydrogen fuel cells to charge the, the off-road racers and you, you could have made the choice to burn the hydrogen in a zero emissions ICE situation, and you could have the sound and the excitement of, uh, of racing that way. What do you say to the traditional uh, race enthusiasts who, who wish for that, uh, that internal combustion experience? Why did you decide to bring the, uh, the fuel cell onto the vehicle instead? I think there are a few um, factors there, Andrew, and it's certainly a good question. I mean, firstly, um, there are still nitrogen emissions uh, through the, the burning of, of hydrogen, and that for us, that's not the, not a, um, a consideration. We just we just cannot, therefore, go down that route. Um, obviously, the fuel cells have the benefit of having an EV powertrain as well, um, and therefore, you can allow pretty effective mutualization between the two uh, technologies. Um, and so, for the transfer to Extreme E and Extreme H, it allows us to use ninety five percent of the same car that we're using in Extreme E. Yep. in extreme H. Therefore, there's the sharing of spare parts. There's the um, the development of the car that's already been made in extreme E can be transferred over very seamlessly, allowing mm -hmm. everyone, including Spark, our car partner, uh, and, and the teams to really focus on the fuel cell side. Perfect. Excellent. So fuel cells, in my experience, typically don't do well with dynamic power loads. They really like to run at more of a steady state. And so racing is probably the most dynamic application you could imagine for a power source. So in most uh, fuel cell situations, you, you still have a battery as a reservoir to take that power from the fuel cell and, and give you a place to dynamically feed it to the, uh, to the consumption of the, of the motor. Um, and also to, a place to put your regenerative braking. So I assume you're still going to have a battery in your uh, hydrogen racers. Yes, Andrew, you're correct. There certainly will still be a, a battery in Extreme H. Um, and um, I would love to be able to give you a definitive answer now in terms of the, the dimensions and the, the capacity and uh, et cetera of that battery. But that's something we're working through at the moment with Spark and yep. um, the other experts that we're working with. It's, um, it's a key feature for us because obviously then it determines the, the rest of the infrastructure of the car. Yeah, it's, uh, so this is one of those examples of where a challenge of racing being that you need a more dynamic fuel cell could drive the invention of new technology and, and the advancement of that uh, fuel cell technology so that it's even more useful for passenger cars. I totally agree with you. Certainly you've seen if, right from the start of motorsports how it often leads the way in the transfer of technology over to, to road cars. And, and this is no different. You know, I think uh, Formula E and, and, and Alejandro Gag showed that with um, with the development on the electric side and how that's transferred over and how OEMs have used Formula E um, to both showcase that technology but also develop new technologies. We believe that through Extreme H and involving OEMs in that, we will be able to do the same. Excellent. And so that starts to answer my next question, actually, which is that hydrogen fuel cells so far seems to be finding its home in long haul, commercial, heavy duty applications where that uh, where that mass of all the batteries on the trucks could be a real downside and the the lightness of the fuel cell system and, and the hydrogen storage can help uh, to uh, to make for a better application but most of the car makers now are shying away from doing hydrogen fuel cell in passenger vehicles so it seems like you're uh, 
putting kind of a bet on the, uh, the the resurgence of fuel cells for passenger cars. What would you say to uh, skeptics on that topic? Absolutely. We do believe that hydrogen and fuel cells has a place both in motorsports and in road cars. I mean, if you look at certain OEMs at the moment, we have Toyota, Hyundai, BMW also, they're well underway with their R&D uh, programs in relation to this. Certainly electric is prominent at the moment, but I think time mm -hmm. will tell. And we, we believe both technologies have a place, not just in long haul for hydrogen, but also in, in, in everyday road car use. Very good. So will the format of, uh, you said that it's gonna be an extension of Extreme E. You said that you're gonna use basically the same, the same cars, but obviously you'll have another car that'll have the hydrogen application. Um, but the racing format itself, will that be adapted at all or will it be uh, similar to the Extreme E setup? Extreme E and Extreme H, will, uh, Extreme H will certainly be similar and compatible because, as I said earlier, they'll be at the same event locations on the same weekend. However, we are looking to differentiate elements of Extreme H to showcase the key features of, of that technology. So perhaps it could be more laps for Extreme H um, or even it could be a refueling halfway through a race, because as we know, it, with hydrogen and the fuel cell as a potential for a lot quicker refueling than, say, for uh, the battery charging. Excellent. So that would be another way to showcase one of the advantages of hydrogen, which is the speed of refueling, because you're now dealing with the gas rather than pushing electrons. Exactly. Excellent. Excellent. So it's 2024 is when we can look for the hydrogen racing. And just to uh, to give a plug for Extreme E, where can people tune in? Where can people stream Extreme E? I know you guys are into your second season now, so where can they uh, where can they plug in? Absolutely. Well, you can you can plug in worldwide. I mean, we we certainly maximise eyeballs on on our uh, sport on our product. So um, you know, if you go to extremee.com, uh, on you can you can find the full list of. Uh, of both broadcasters and, and, and where to view. So uh, go there and uh, find out in your territory. And um, if not, contact Extremely Direct and we're sure to help you. Okay, very good. James, I know we have just a couple of seconds left. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell the race fans out there about Extremely or, or the exciting things to come? Certainly lots of exciting things to come. Uh, we're working on the calendar for 2023 and beyond with some new locations. Uh, I think we've explored a, a wide range of different surfaces and environments so far, but there's certainly more to come. Um, uh, and, and also on the on the car side, we've, we've got a couple of exciting announcements, including today we, we announced Fox as our suspension partner, obviously in off-road racing. The, uh, nice. the damping side of things is pretty important. So we're delighted that uh, you know, Fox, the global leaders in, in suspension, have joined us today. So, um, yeah, there's a lot, lot more to come. Fantastic news, James. Thanks so much for your time. I really enjoyed our, our talk. And uh, everybody online, stay tuned. There's more to come on the Green Racing Virtual Summit. Have a great day. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, James.